Hello everyone, happy to see you here, welcome back to my channel. Hi Mathematics, today we have a very interesting cubic equation, but this is like a mixture of it. We have the third power and we also have factorial, so this is also a really great thing, this is also a really great Olympiad question. So right now we can use the pod video and write a solution, write your assumption down into the comment section, and in a few seconds we will check our answers. Okay, so here is our question, and right now, right now let's solve it. First of all, a lot of students are confused about this n factorial, because we have a mixture, we don't have like a classic algorithm, how can we simplify it? So right now let's think a little bit about this n factorial because in terms of like school knowledge and factorial we can express as n times n minus 1 factorial n minus 1 factorial so the next one and after the previous one but with with a factorial sign and to be honest you can easily look at this example when we have for example 6 factorial we can write this 6 factorial as 6 times 5 5 factorial. Okay, this is our um, quick example, so I hope you understand it. This factorial can be written at this at this product, and in terms of like variables, this also works all like that. Okay, so this is a correct expression, and this is also like a quick example just for better understanding this, this expression. So right now, let's change this n factorial by this expression. Okay, let's do this. Let's change it. So as a result, we have, um, let's start with this. So we have n cubed, so this expression in the beginning, so we have n cubed. The next thing we have equal to n plus n factorial. This is our expression that we found before. So we have n times n minus 1, n minus 1 factorial. And right now we can easily divide uh, both sides by n, or we can easily factor from here our n, so we can easily write this as n times n squared, just for better understanding. Right here we can easily factor n, so we have n, and inside parentheses we have 1 plus this n minus 1 and minus 1 factorial. Just for better understanding, I'm going to factor it. But to be honest, we can easily cancel this 3, this right here, and this one right here. But right now we have n right here, n right here, so we have all the time product, we have multiplication, so we can easily cancel this n and this n. And to be honest, we need to mention that n is not equal to 0, okay, which is extremely important for us because we cancel it by n. n is not equal to 0. All right, what are we going to do next? Let's write the expression that we have right now. So what do we have right here? We have n square. Let's see what will happen when we write our expression. So we have n square equal to, we have 1 plus this expression. So 1 plus n minus 1 factorial. So n minus 1 n minus 1 factorial. And what are we going to do next? Uh, the next thing, let's write this a a 1 on the left side. Let's see what will happen. So as a result, we have n square minus 1 equal to n minus 1 factorial, n minus 1 factorial. And if you look closely, we have n square minus 1. And when we write right here as the power of 1, when we write this 2, it changed nothing because uh, 1 square equal to 1. But in terms of like school knowledge, this is our difference of square. Now we need to know, we need to mention one really important formula. We have a square minus b square. And to be honest, this is like the easiest, the, the most basic formula in terms of algebra. This is a remote basic identity we have a minus b times a plus b times a plus b and right now let's apply this formula right here let's apply this formula in this in this expression on the left side so as a result what do we get we get 1 n minus 1 and inside parentheses we get uh, we get n plus 1 and right here we have equal to n minus 1 factorial n minus 1 we have factorial n minus 1 factorial all right, so what are we going to do next? Of course, we can easily uh, simplify, we can easily express this factorial uh, expression in terms of like another expression, so we can we can easily express it, but right now I'm going to show you a great substitution method because we have n minus 1 and n, n minus 1 we have right here. So if we write our substitution, so just look at it, so we have let n minus 1 equal to y, okay? And from here our n is equal to equal to y plus 1, y plus 1. Okay, and to be honest, we need right here n plus 1, so when we add a 1 on both sides, so we have n plus 1 equal to equal to y plus 2. And we have everything for our substitution, we have n minus 1 equal to y, and right here we have y, and n plus 1 equal to y plus 2, all right? We, we add 1 to this expression, so as a result we have our n plus 1, which is extremely important right here. So right now let's write our equation, uh, equation after, after substitution, so let's do this. So as a result, what do we get right here? In n minus 1 equal to y plus 2, so we have y plus 2, y plus 2 times y, here is our, uh, here is our uh, y, yeah, we have n plus 1 equal to y, and this one equal to y, we're going to change, swap positions, equal to, equal to y factorial, this is our y factorial, 
my factorial. Okay, so we hope you understand. I every here I just change position. Okay, I'm going to write instead of n minus one, I'm going to write y on the second position and y plus two. This is our n plus uh, n plus one. All right, this is our equation right now. And first of all, instead of this y factorial, let's use the same logic as we did before. So y factorial, this is the same as y times y minus one factorial, all right? So instead of this y factorial, let's use this expression. So let's do this. So we have y plus two, y plus two times y equal to, instead of y factorial, we have y times y minus one factorial, y minus one y minus 1 factorial. And right here we can easily cancel our, our y. Let's cancel it. So we have y and y. We can easily cancel it on both sides. What do we have as a result? Uh, and of course y is not equal to 0, okay, because we're going to cancel it, okay? So as a result we have y plus 2, all right? So we have y plus 2 on the left side equal to y minus 1 factorial. y minus 1 factorial. y minus 1, y minus 1 factorial. All right, and right now let's uh, let's uh, add uh, write this expression on the left side. Okay, when as a, as a result, or let's bring this to the right side. It it will be like even better for us. So as a result, we have y minus one factorial. Next thing we have minus y minus y, and equal to equal to two. Okay, so this is our final final equation right now. And and uh, to be honest, y is greater or equal than one y is greater or equal than 1, because right here this expression inside this factorial factorial sign need to be positive. So y minus 1 need to be greater or equal than 0. So from here y is greater or equal than 1. So this looks like our final uh, expression because we can't simplify this more. This is our y minus 1 factorial minus y is equal to is equal to 2. So right now let's see what will happen. So let's suppose, let's suppose what will happen when, for example, y is equal to y is equal to one? Okay, so y is equal to one. Let's see what will happen. So as a result, what do we get? One minus one equal to zero factorial, minus one equal to two. To be honest, I guess this is absolutely wrong expression. There is no way. Right here we have two as a correct answer, so we reject this this root. Let's see what will happen. Y equal to two. From here, what do we have? We have two minus one equal to one factorial minus y, y equal to 2 minus 2, equal to 2. I guess this is also a, a wrong solution, a wrong, uh, like a wrong expression for us. So let's see what will happen when y will be equal to, y will be equal to 3. Let's see what will happen. So 3 minus 2 equal to 2 factorial minus 2 factorial minus 3 is equal to, is equal to 2. I guess this is also a, a wrong solution and a wrong expression for us. Let's see what will happen when y is equal to y is equal to 4, all right? So let's see what will happen. As a result, we have 3 factorial minus 4 is equal to 2. And I guess this is a correct expression, a correct solution, because 3 factorial, this is our 6, yeah? 6 minus 4 is equal to 2. Yeah, this is a correct answer. So a y is equal to 4, this is a great, a great uh, root for us. But don't forget about our substitution, because things... Our substitution, what do we get at the beginning? n minus 1 equal to y in the beginning we had. But y is equal to 4. We, we found it. So what y equal to equal to 4. So as a result from here, we can easily get that our n is equal to 5. n is equal to n is equal to 5. And it looks like this is a solution because in the beginning we had expression in terms of in terms of n. And right now let's see what will happen when we check our root. Let's see. So prove. So we have in the beginning n cube equal to n plus n factorial. But we know that n is equal to 5. Everything uh, goes like that. We, we solved it. We find that our y is also great for us. We had a substitution. So let's see what will happen when n will be equal to uh, equal to 5. So as a result, what do we have? 5 cube equal to 5 plus 5 factorial. Let's, let's simplify this a little bit. So 5 cube, 125, I hope you know it, equal to... 5 plus 5 factorial, 5 factorial, a product, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, equal to 120, yeah? So as a result, we have 125. So 125 equal to 125. This is also a great thing that we, um, that this uh, root is uh, correct for us. So let's write our final answer to this question, uh, for final answer, so n is equal to is equal to 5. This is a correct answer. We proved it. We, we solved this question. Absolutely. 
absolutely correct. But to be honest, this is my approach, my my approach to this question. You can also write your approach because uh, maybe you have your your answer, your approach, your thoughts about it. Because in terms of fundamental theorem of algebra, we have n cubes, so it means that we have like no more than three roots. To be honest, we don't know how many real, how many complex roots, but at least we have we have three roots. So it means that maybe we have right here complex roots. So it will be really interesting to read your thoughts down into the comment section. It will be also really interesting to exchange information, and I hope you understand it. I really uh, wait a lot for your for your response, for your for your notes, for your thoughts about this question. And thank you for your time. Wish you all the best. See you in the next videos. Have a great day.